Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now today's video is, as you can probably tell by both the title and what I have set up here on my desk, is going to be a follow-up to the $20 PC video that I recently did a, uh, about a week or so ago. And if you missed that video, I would highly recommend uh, that you go and check it out just so you'll be up to speed on what it is that we're going to be doing here. Um, but those of you who didn't see that video, this isn't just any $20 PC. This is a $20 Core i7 PC that has a 4770 i7 processor in it, which is definitely really cool and a really good deal for $20. Now, the only problem with this computer is, uh, is that the hard drive is going bad. And something else that I just realized before shooting this video that apparently didn't happen in the other video is that this computer is locked with a password. And I guess when I plugged in the PC when I first got it in that last video, Windows was already um, saved in memory, so it just kind of automatically logged me back into it. But uh, now when I'm you know turning this on, I'm getting this password prompt here. But now we could probably get around this using you know a various amount of tools, but there's no real reason for me to get back into this system because what I'm going to be doing is formatting this, wiping all this guy's data off. Because if you guys remember from that last video, there was a very decent amount of uh, personal documents that were on this computer left by the previous owner, and just for you know his security and his privacy, I want to kind of get all that stuff off of here, um, so that whoever it is that ends up using this computer in the future. Um, you know, if I decide to, you know, give it to uh, somebody else, that they won't have all of that uh, data on here. Plus, they wouldn't really want it anyway, because it's somebody else's data. So, what I've decided to do is uh, bring out my trusty spiral of CDs right here. And we are going to be, let me just uh, pull these out here until I find the, the, the correct disc that I want to use. There it is, right here, all the way to the very bottom. D-Ban. I'm sure you guys know what this program is if you have... Uh, ever handled uh you know getting rid of uh personal data on a hard drive before but dban or um formerly known as derek's boot and nuke uh, it's just uh, abbreviated to dban but it's you know that's its formal name is a tool that is it's uh, based on linux but it basically just overwrites all of the data on the hard drive with just a bunch of random stuff uh, to assure that even through the use of data recovery tools, it will be very, very difficult to get uh, that owner or the previous owner's data. Because believe it or not, even after formatting a computer, you know, if you go through Windows and if you reinstall and reformat the hard drive, there are actually still tools out there that you can use to retrieve the old data. Um, even after the drive has been formatted. So what D-Band does is instead of just formatting the drive, it actually writes a bunch of random data to the drive so that it cannot be recovered. So that's what we're gonna be doing. And I, I was initially going to just try to uh, clone this drive to another drive to save the Windows 8 installation. But hopefully if Windows 8 works as it is supposed to, when we reinstall Windows 8 on a new hard drive, because I do have a new drive to put in this computer, Windows 8 will hopefully be able to reactivate properly, which it is normally supposed to do because the, all the licensing information is attached to the motherboard and the hardware. And speaking of storage, as you guys can probably tell from the title as well, we're going to be installing, you guessed it, an SSD. And again, this isn't just any SSD, mind you. This is a $20 SSD. Yes, a $20 SSD for a $20 computer. It's just made to be, okay? This actually came off of eBay. It's only a 120 gig SSD, but I figured for just the Windows installation and a few programs and maybe a game or two, this is gonna be perfect uh, for this machine. So yeah, it's a Kingston A400 um, 120 gig SSD that was on sale by a seller on eBay for around $20, brand new in the box, so I pretty much had to pick it up. When I saw that, I immediately thought of this computer, and yeah, we're just, we're just gonna, we're just gonna make it happen. So let's go ahead and actually put D-Band into the drive here. I'll go ahead and reach over and do that. We'll put our D-Band disc in here, and we're going to go ahead, and I'm gonna get this camera properly set up, and we'll go ahead and uh, reboot the machine. All right, so I've got the camera set up in the best possible spot here, so I'm not gonna really move the monitor around. But we're just gonna go ahead and, I don't wanna update and restart, so we're just gonna have to force shut down the system. I guess I probably could just press shut down, but that would make too much sense. So, uh, go ahead and start it up here. 
and we probably are, are, are gonna get that smart error again oh see this is the thing is okay so press escape for start a menu um, when you try to boot into the hard disk it will immediately give you um, a smart error because the drive is apparently in pretty bad shape so yeah this is the error right here I, I hope it's not trying to boot from the hard disk but it says that you know the smart hard disk uh, check has detected an imminent failure and it asks you to immediately back up um, the drive which of course we're not going to do because we don't want to save this data on here so if i press continue startup so it didn't load the menu that i was wanting it uh, to load but there is another way that we can um, do that since we're booting back here into windows anyway we can just um, boot into the windows 8 advanced options menu and, and boot from the disk that way um, so we'll just wait for windows to decide to start here you can see at the bottom that oh, okay and then this also comes up to bit defender keeps saying there's a there's a problem but uh, a quick shortcut here is go to shut down hold the shift key and press restart and if you did it correctly it'll say please wait and now instead of actually restarting the whole computer it will boot into the um, advanced options menu which should give us the option to boot from the cd okay so here we go use a device we want to use usb flop I, I don't why do they make this so difficult i just want I, I, I don't have a usb cd i guess we'll just do usb floppy or cd i mean I, this isn't this is an internal drive okay so once again did not do what i wanted to do all right so we are back and as you can see let me just go ahead and pan the uh the camera over here you can see we've been kind of uh, tinkering with the system over here and essentially what I've been trying to do is figure out why that the uh, that the CD drive is not being recognized by the system. At least it wasn't being seen in the Windows Advanced Options menu. I even tried going ahead and plugging in a USB drive with DBAN on it, and it also wasn't being recognized in the Options menu either, which was very annoying and I was very confused. But as it turns out, it, the uh, both of these drives are actually being recognized in the BIOS. You can see here we've got three different hard drives that it's saying it's found as well as a the uh, the CD-ROM drive so everything shows up in here it comes up it'll show us the serial number and everything but what I want to do is uh, change the boot order right here so here we go so this is what was coming up before and where it, it doesn't show oh that's the problem legacy boot sources are disabled for whatever reason so let's press F5 to enable that you must disable secure boot okay so that explains a lot so we're going to disable secure boot we're going to press f10 that's what it is i i remember having to do this on another windows 8 computer that was having a, a very similar actually that computer was my older windows 8 system and i had bought a um a graphics card for it and it wasn't booting off like when you would plug the um the vga cable into the graphics card it wouldn't like nothing would come up on the monitor and the uh, internal chip was still you know working like the intel integrated graphics and it turns out that it was secure boot was enabled it was preventing it from working so that's probably the same problem here so i'll press f10 to accept then we'll go into boot order we will enable legacy boot devices f5 i just disabled secure boot why <laughs> okay let's try it again secure boot configuration f10 it's been disabled don't really know oh legacy support we need to enable that's that's probably what it is okay we'll press f10 save that boot order there we go so now we have legacy boot sources now we have a uh, usb floppy slash cd and hard drives so what we're going to do is just uh press enter we're going to can we oh i guess we can't um, move legacy boot above UEFI so okay okay well now we have legacy boot enabled so that hopefully should we'll press F10 to accept that now when we um, let me just make sure there's nothing else I need to do in here power on options maybe post messages let's go ahead and enable post messages just so we can see what's going on device options um, Hyperthring enable integrated video disable. Okay, so all that looks good. We'll go ahead and save changes and exit. Now when we reboot, we will uh, boot to the startup menu again. And hopefully now we should see both of these things. 
Press enter to bypass that. Operating system boot mode change. Please enter the passcode displayed below to complete the change. Okay, this is interesting. 5160, enter. We'll press F1 to boot. All right, so good news. We now go into the uh, to the boot device menu and everything down here under legacy boot sources shows up. So what we're gonna do is since I have a newer version of DBAN on uh, actually the, the newest version as of this video on the USB drive, we're gonna go ahead and just boot from that. So that's the uh, this InnoStar one right here. We'll go ahead and start that up. And here we go, we're in uh, uh, Derek's boot new or DBAN right here. Um, this software is going to go ahead and just uh, press enter to start in, in, in uh, interactive mode. This software is actually pretty simple to use. If you don't want to spend money to, uh, you know, securely erase data, it's definitely a very, very good option because it is totally free and it works pretty well. I, I have used this uh, a handful of times. Actually, in some older videos on this channel, I have actually used this as well uh, to wipe, you know, some of those computers that I have found at, uh, at, at you know, thrift stores with personal data on them. So yeah, this is uh, the actual menu right here once you boot into DBAN and press enter to boot it in interactive mode. And we get basically a list of all of um, our devices here. Now, this SanDisk drive is definitely, I actually looked in the system. There is actually a drive plugged into the M2 slot and it is a SanDisk drive, and it's, I guess, a 14 gig drive. I don't really know what that could be used for. Maybe it holds like some system information. I really don't know, but just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and not wipe that one and just wipe the one terabyte uh, hard drive, which has Windows and all the guys' data on it. So I'm just going to go ahead and press the down arrow key to go all the way down to the Western Digital Drive, uh, the one terabyte, you can see it says right there. We're going to go ahead and press spacebar to select it. You can see it says wipe over there. And we're going to press F10 to start. And that is all there is to it. Again, it's super simple to actually, you know, navigate uh, this program. Even if you were used to like a graphical user interface, you could probably figure this out very easily. Um, but now it just uh, begins to securely erase all this data. This definitely will take a little while. You can see this is the, uh, you know, percentage on the far left there and at the top right you can see it's got time remaining right now it's got about six and a half hours but uh it has to do three different passes as you can see there it says pass one of three so we're just on the very first pass now and because it's not just erasing data it's actually writing just random useless data to, uh, to the drive to overwrite what's already on it so yeah we're just going to go ahead and you know let it uh, do its thing here and I will come back in hopefully less than seven hours. I actually it's almost seven hours it looks like and uh, we will take a look at uh, you know actually installing the SSD getting Windows reinstalled and making this thing a really nice little computer so I will uh, I will see you guys then. All right, welcome back everybody. Um, the hard drive you know DBAN has successfully finished wiping the hard drive and it took just about nine hours yeah just about nine hours to actually get this thing fully wiped so i had this computer on for the whole day pretty much and now it's finally time to take this drive out i don't know what i'm gonna do with it because i mean it is fully wiped now i, I may end up seeing if i can fix it um and put it into uh, another computer but now what we're gonna do is we're going to install this kingston 120 gig ssd so let me just go ahead and uh open this up here Go ahead and pull the drive out. There we go. There is our 120 gig Kingston SSD. And we're just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna leave because I think you need uh, tools to get this drive removed. So, so yeah, I'm just gonna unplug uh, these uh, SATA data cables and the power cable as well. And just plug it into this new Kingston drive and just leave the uh, original hard drive in there. So we'll just leave this here. Um, it, it's gonna be totally fine because you know it's all solid state, so there's no moving parts in this. So you could you know leave this anywhere, but we're just gonna leave it there for now. I, I, I will properly mount it later. Um, hopefully there'll be a way to do that. I think maybe on the back of this bracket here it might work because uh, you know keep in mind that this is a you know two and a half inch uh, drive form factor rather than a three and a half inch. Um, so we may have trouble getting this mounted in here, but I'm gonna see if I can work something out. Um, what we're gonna do now is I don't believe I have a Windows 8.1 uh, DVD. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, download that, copy it over to my USB drive here. 
and we will actually get installing uh, or get Windows 8.1 installing on this new drive right here. All right, so we are back once again with another bit of an interesting discovery, at least I, I believe uh, that this is the case. So you'll notice that we have the, um, the regular hard drive totally unplugged from the system. The only drives that are plugged in are the SSD and that SanDisk uh, drive, you know, in the MSATA port that contains the recovery information. That is what I believe that it contains because when I looked back at my old video, the uh, HP recovery partition was 16 gigs and that's a 16 gig drive. So the only thing it can be is the recovery partition. And what I found here is, let me go ahead and just pan over here and show you what's up on this monitor right now. You will notice that the same error message is coming up. The smart hard disk uh, or the smart hard drive detects an imminent failure, but the regular drive, you know, the traditional hard drive isn't even plugged into the system. But you'll notice here that it says SATA 5. Now what's interesting about that, let me go ahead and pan back over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and have to do like free cam mode for this. But you'll see down there that we've got four different uh, SATA ports. They're all labeled. We got SATA 1 and 2 on the top. We got uh, SATA 0 over there, and SATA 3 is that yellow one. So where is SATA 5 at? Now this down here, I believe, is SATA 4. You'll, you'll see that that, that that red port there says SATA 4 next to it. So where is SATA 5? Well, I believe that it could be this MSATA drive over here. Maybe this is the one that's throwing up that smart error. But you'll see that it doesn't say SATA 5 anywhere, but there's that MSATA over there. So what I'm going to try to do is unplug this drive from the system and see if we stop getting this error message here. All right, so there is our SanDisk recovery drive right here. It's been successfully removed from the system. Now let's see if, uh, let me go ahead and reach over and plug this in here. And there we go. Totally, totally gone. So it was this drive the whole time. The regular hard drive didn't even have an issue. At least I, I don't think it did. So that's very interesting. So it was this drive the entire time that I didn't even, I, I saw this in the original video, but I didn't think it was a hard drive. I, I, th I thought it was like a wireless car, but when I looked closer, I saw that it said SanDisk on it. And yeah, th this turns out to be an M2 SSD that I guess HP started using uh, to store all of the recovery information on here. I always thought that they made a separate partition on the main drive because that's what they did for years because I owned a couple HP machines and it was always um, they made a separate partition on the main hard drive that held all of the recovery information. So this drive may, I, I guess it might have something wrong with it because it was saying like that it was, you know, throwing up like an imminent failure error. So uh, that is that is good news. So it wasn't even the original drive. So I could actually probably keep that drive in here, keep that one terabyte drive as like a you know storage data drive and use uh, the SSD for the boot drive and for all of our programs. So this is actually going to be a very very nice computer. But uh, Windows 8 has just finished downloading. So what I'm going to do is uh, write that over to our USB drive here, and we'll get to installing this on the system. All right, so I've got Windows 8.1 64-bit on this USB drive right here. We're just going to go ahead and plug it into the system here, and we're going to uh, restart it uh, right now. Let's go ahead and press the power button. Now hopefully we will be able to see that there is a bootable device on here. So let's just actually press escape for the startup menu. We'll go to um, boot device options and we're going to boot from that InnoStar once again. And there we go. Uh, perfect. So Yes, I was originally actually when I figured out that this was the, that this drive here was the uh, you know recovery partition. I was thinking of just like using this to reinstall Windows 8.1, but since it's this drive that's having the problem, um, I just decided to just uh, against doing that just to avoid any issues. So we are just going to let me get my mouse here. We're going to go ahead and click on next, install now. Now. Hopefully, I mean, as I said earlier, if Windows 8 works like it should, it shouldn't ask me for a product key or anything. It should already see the uh, existing licensing info and just uh, automatically activate for us because that's what it's supposed to do. So we're going to do a custom install and I don't have uh, the one terabyte drive plugged in. So the only drive we're going to see is our um, 
you know, 120 gig SSD, which is showing up in Windows as a 118 or 111.8 gigs. We're going to go ahead and create a new partition on this drive right here. And now we've got our system reserved, so we're going to go ahead and select next. And there we go. It's just as simple as that. So we're going to go ahead and uh, allow Windows to copy all of its files. This actually should be pretty quick since it's going from a USB flash drive to an SSD. So hopefully those, you know, read and write speeds will be much faster than on a traditional drive. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and let it do its thing, let it finish installing, and I'll come back once we are... Um, at the next portion of the setup. So yeah, that was definitely a very quick installation process. It probably took about five or so minutes. It was really, really, really quick. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and customize this computer. We'll go ahead and choose, uh, we'll go ahead and choose this blue, why not? And we'll just call this um, owner PC. Now we're gonna go ahead and customize these settings here because I do wanna turn a few things off. So we'll go ahead and uh, automatically install updates. We'll go ahead and use smart screen. That's fine. Um, don't want to send, uh, oh yeah, this is Windows 8, so it has all this stuff off by default. Man, isn't that nice? Um, yeah, we'll just, you know, this is fine. Don't want to use Bing, uh, don't use this, no, no, no. Um, get better protection by sending, yeah, uh, sure, we'll leave that on. Okay, name, owner, we're not gonna do the password and we're going to finalize our settings. Now, I would uh, probably update this to Windows 10 if I could, because, you know, we get support that would last a, uh, a lot longer, because I think Windows 8 support ends in like uh, 20, I, I think Windows 7 is 2019, I think Windows 8, Point one, maybe 2022. It still has a, a, a few good years of support left on it, but because Windows 8 uh, or Windows 10 isn't free anymore, uh, it's not really uh, feasible because I don't want to spend another hundred dollars on uh, getting a Windows 10 license. When Windows 8 will pretty much work just fine. So let's go ahead and uh, pull up our system info here. Uh, to see what exactly we got. So it's saying Windows is not activated. Well, let's see if we can activate Windows. So we do probably need to connect to the internet first. Let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so we've just connected to the internet. Let's go ahead and try to activate Windows and see. Windows can't, oh, there we go. Thanks, you're all done, perfect. So it worked exactly like I wanted it to. Pulled all of that activation info off of uh, the computer hardware. Man, isn't it just great when computer software works like it's supposed to. So let's refresh this page. Uh, and it's still saying it isn't activated down there. So that's interesting. Let's try this again. There we go. Windows is activated. Beautiful. Okay. So of course, these are all of our system specs again. i7-4770, 3.4 gigahertz, 16 gigs of RAM, all that good stuff. Let's go ahead into uh, into my computer here. And see, there we have our local disk. We've got 87 gigs, 87.7 gigabytes free of our 111 gigs. We'll go ahead and take out our uh, USB install drive because we don't need that anymore. So yeah, pretty much all I got to do is uh, I have to get another um, uh, SATA data cable or SATA uh, data cable and hook it up to the regular one terabyte hard drive. I got to get this drive mounted. Um, but that's that's pretty much it. That is installing Windows 8, you know, reinstalling Windows on a brand new SSD while also wiping all the data off of the old hard drive. So that is pretty much going to go ahead and wrap it up for today's video. A total success. While we did have a few hiccups at the very beginning, uh, at least we actually got this whole thing done. We got this thing up and running and we got that guy's uh, data formatted. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on notifications by clicking that bell if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload new videos to get notified whenever I upload new videos on this channel, which I do every week. And uh, be sure to you know drop me a comment, letting me know your thoughts on this whole process. Let me know your experience with using D-Band or with you know installing SSDs uh, in you know your computer. As I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.